with the voice of the archangel and with the chop of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Here end this dream.
1, Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former, former things are passed away. Here can be the reading of God's holy word. Amen. That was one of my students. <laughs> Uh, it's good to be in the house of God and I want you all to know that this is church and in church we praise the Lord so it's okay to praise the Lord it's okay to shout hallelujah the Lord gives and he takes but in all situations we bless the name of the Lord we are going to continue with a selection from Elnora Hamilton and then we have remembrance by Mr. Derek Warrell, our former JDF cricket captain. One, two. Let me say good afternoon. Oh my. The, the, the members want you to be a little lively to cheer them up. Good afternoon. That's better. I'm a little horse, Sister Sheila, family members, but I tell myself that I am still going to sing in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, my God. Yeah. 
let us know you must. I'm going to see her and remember our face. Yeah. Okay? All right. But, uh, they were lived for 70 years. And I live it. And 70 years is a long, long time. So I condensed all those 70 years in this. Are you prepared to stay here until I get you all? I want to say to those people that came here this afternoon to hear about those missteps that Medroy would have made over the years. And, you know, those not so fun things. There are some very comfortable benches outside. Feel free. Because I am here today to talk about those fun and funny times that we share. And we're not going to burden the family anymore than they are, they are, they are already burdened with anything negative this afternoon. We are going to do everything we can to cheer them up, right? All right. Two Saturdays ago, I got a call um, informing me of the passing of Megan. No, I just want you to remember this. One member of our cricket team passed in November, another passed in December, and here was Meg Ride in January. Up where I'm from, they say up there, if at any time crows fly over your house, before six o'clock in the morning, and especially if it's seven of them. <laughs> Your ghost cook. <laughs> so when I heard about Medroy, that Friday, Friday night, no sleep whatsoever. I was wide awake. I watch out pray. <laughs> I slept well over the years since 1990 when I got divorced. I have been sleeping well. But that Friday night, got it up. So, when I got up on Saturday morning, I heard poop, poop, poop over the house. Poop, poop, poop over the house. When I look out, seven crows. I said, oh God, not so quick. You know, we can understand you informing me that night time coming, but not so quick, man. So I made some calls that day and I found out that there were two other people who were my senior in age, members of the team that are still alive. So I took some comfort in that hence I visited Denise that afternoon. So I met Nebra in 1982 when I went to Kingston. Johnny Armin was went into Kingston. And Medroy always wanted to take the team, the cricket team, down to Bosco Bell, Stuart Town. Wanted us to come down and see where he's from. Yes. But he's always saying, as long as Dennis is down here, he's not taking the team with me. <laughs> I always wanted to I asked him from time to time, there was never an answer. But in those days, and you know, I've been told this up to this morning, I was not the debonair beauty that you see before you this morning. Eh? I was sort of a rugged kind of handsomeness at that time. <laughs> so maybe I didn't want to take it to me, Denise. <laughs> Didn't want to take the here at all. So, this morning, I want to, well, last time I checked, we are in St. Mary, ain't it? And Denise is right here. So, then, right? Eat your heart out, my friend. 
people that are coming up here, but it's not time to. So I said, Megua, what is it that caused you to be touching your head? And the people are coming up. But it means this time now, you know. Megua is saying, time passed. And he don't find anybody to pick out the back and make sure pick it out himself. <laughs> I just want to make one little confession to Medroy this afternoon. When Medroy played for Jamaica in 1985, Medroy should have played from 1979. Should have played years ago. All of them should have played years ago. When you look at his stats, yeah. so Medroy was under, when you say under pressure. So the low score that he made, we understood why, you know, he was under so much pressure, and you know what can happen when you're under pressure, that kind of way. Medroy played the first inning, it was against Trinidad. Three, made three in the first inning. That time, you know, Medroy was by far the best batsman in Jamaica. Yeah. Medroy made three. And we met the evening after the cricket match. Now we talk about it. And the morning early, we got together again, you know, and we traveled down to Savannah Park. And Medroy shared a secret with me. And I know he shared it with somebody else. And that person didn't talk with me talk. And I tell the I said, it's the other person talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I have confessed to the this, this afternoon that when you tell me that George, when you tell you that you must take any guard in the second inning, it's me talk. <laughs> so Medroy said that he went to bed that night and had a dream that George had the came to him and told him, look. Everything is against you. Don't take any, any guard. It's eggs are young ones. And he went to the second innings and there was no young one. There was it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just got, I'm just so happy that I could be here to just share these memories of him with you all and to remind you of the fun and action filled life that Medroy lived. He was no dedicated person, you know, he was always into it and always going and going and going. Alright? So let these memories remain with you, especially the family, you know, the pleasant side of him. Maybe you didn't get to see that side of him because he was always away. You know, but please just remember these things. Very funny platform part of him. And Denise, in his memory, let us meet by the family home at least twice a year. <laughs> May your soul rest in peace, my friend. Thank you. Um, Proverbs 17, verse 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit tried the bones. Thank you, Mr. Borel, for enlightening the atmosphere, lightening the atmosphere, because we know it's a very sad occasion. But we can still give our thanks and we can still smile at our storms. At this time, we have tributes. I'm not sure everyone is here. But we will take the Mango Valley SDA Church first, followed by Christopher uh, Williams, his brother, and then Andrew Hines in that order. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mr. We, as we sing this song, we just want to dedicate it to the Williams family especially Elder Sheila Williams, our elder, first elder at church. Elder Williams, we want to tell you that you are in our prayers. The entire family is in our prayers. We pray for your strength, 
and we hope that as we sing, you will get comfort knowing that one day tears will never stay in the street of the glory. If I look on the tears that had fallen, it would seem like an ocean to me. And if my heart was a window, you could look through.
everyone knows that a minivan license plate CP9659 is blocking a gray car that's directly in front. So if you could allow that person to move, we'll appreciate that. CP9659.
Just remember that God is standing by. When you cut right over, just remember when you are heartaches, don't cry. Oh no, just remember. Dennis, 
Sheila, which is my third sister. Just keep on all the faith. The rest of the family, PJ and the rest, just keep on all the faith. Because we are living in a world, and the good time will tell us that death will come. Yes. And all I can say, nearly God before us, but if our lives are so in tune, then if he was on that path, then one day we will be able to see him. So keep on holding on to him. Yes. Thank you. On behalf of the Guinness Mount Seventh-day Adventist Church, I am expressing condolences to the family. Uh, I didn't want to say specifically to Sister Sheila, just to everybody in the family. I know what you're going through. We know what you're going through. But we serve a God, and he's able to comfort you. And this is a song that I used to comfort myself when my mother died. You've been in the storm It seems like forever Your nights of confusion Have been so long Your ship has lost anchor
Praise the Lord. Ride out your storms because God is right there with us. He did not promise that there would be storms, but he has promised that he will be with us all the time. And for that we give him praise. For that we give him praise. I want to acknowledge that the family, in particular, the Williams family, would like to thank the United Hope Seventh-day Adventist Church family led by Pastor Richard Campbell. And that church is in New, New Jersey, Union, New Jersey. And the family thanks them for their support and are praying that God will continue to bless them as they go from strength to strength. Amen? At this time, we are going to lift that offering. Uh, we ask that you give willingly and generously to the work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in the Rockabesa community. We lift that offering at our funeral services to help with all work in the community. All of it goes back to the community. It doesn't stay here in our church. Uh, we do not charge for funeral services. Uh, we see ourselves as a lighthouse in the community where we serve our community. That's our purpose here. And so we just ask that you give generously so that our work can continue to grow and expand as we serve the people of the Oracovisa communities. So we are going to invite our deacons and deaconesses at this time to come forward as we pray. Deacons and deaconesses, please come forward. Ready? Let us let's stand for prayer, everyone. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. And as we lift this offering, Lord, we pray that you will bless every giver. And as the offering is tallied and as it goes towards the work in the community, we pray, Lord, that for every person that it will reach, for every service that we will render, that the hand of the Holy Ghost will be upon it and each one will be blessed. Thank you, we pray. Amen. May be seated all. As we lift the offering, we will say, The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me down to lie. The pastor's green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by he lives, he lives, he lives. And we we'll sing that we will sing as we lift our offering.
this time. We're going to, your program says we should be having the eulogy at this time, but we're going to move it a bit to after the sermon. So it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Oracopisa district, covering seven churches, Mango Valley, Retreat, Toa Isle, Bosco Bell, Gennis Mountain, Oracopisa, of course. Pastor Linton Hamilton Ma and Marka. Pastor Linton Hamilton is a humble servant of God. He serves robustly. And one of the things that I love about our pastor is his passion, not just for the church, but for the community. He's a community pastor. And I say that to let everyone know that he's not just a pastor of the church, he's your pastor as well. No matter where you live, no matter where you worship, I want you to know that he is available to you. And he's here with Sister Hamilton as well in the congregation as well. And as a family, they serve faithfully. And Pastor is a man of many talents. He's also an exceptional singer and guitarist. And we thank God for his ministry in this part of the vineyard. Pastor Hamilton will come to us with a word that I have no doubt has been placed on his heart by the Spirit of the living God. In Jamaica, we hear the word of the Lord often. And because of that, we tend to take it for granted. But I want to remind us all that to hear the word of God is a privilege. It's a privilege. And we should always assume a posture that acknowledges that. That we have not been left in darkness, but we have been given the light of the word of God. So as Pastor Hamilton preaches today, I ask that we all open our hearts and let Jesus in. We want Jesus to be lifted high. We want his promises to be made known so that men, women, boys and girls can take hold of them and gain eternal life. Just before he comes, the Orchestra Church, which is far, is prepared to give us a, heart, a song of meditation. So I ask us all to open our hearts now, quiet our spirits, and listen to the word of the Lord as, as it comes to us in song and then in the spoken word. Thank you.
And that's where we will find a word of comfort. So the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 34, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of God? And then we're going to go down to verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, rest in this congregation, especially the Williams family. Hold them in the depths of your hands. Rest in this message and may they find comfort in these words. In Jesus' name, Amen. To Elder Sheila Williams and her family, we would just want to know that we love you all and that we have been praying for you that God will continue to give us the strength. And we know I know for myself from since I came to St. Mary that Sister Sheila Williams must be a special person. If there is always no sad times around Elder Sheila. And so we want to assure you that God have you in the palm of your hands. So may God bless you and keep you together. And as we await the coming of Jesus, we pray for each other. So since last week, I have actually heard about nine deaths from persons that I have been acquainted with. And I am wondering what is happening. But I want you to know that translates into the fact that we don't have a lot of time here on planet Earth. So beloved friends, make sure you redeem the time. Today I'd like to talk to you on the subject, the eulogy of Jesus. The eulogy of Jesus. So Jesus Christ was a special child. And one day as his earthly father performed sacrifices in the temple. An angel appeared on the right hand side of the temple to Joseph and told Joseph that Mary shall bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus. Mary is pregnant with child. 
But yet, Joseph doesn't know about it. But Joseph was a special person as well. And Mary was a special person. So as the time fulfilled, beloved friends, there was word that Jesus was about to be born in Bethlehem. And so there was a star that was twinkling over Bethlehem. And there were some wise men who were wise enough to know that the king was about to be born. And so they started following a star. In the meantime, I want you to know that Jesus is our certain star, even in uncertain times. And so when the wise men got ready to go and look for baby Jesus, they brought with them some gifts. They brought gold because they were wise enough to know that he was going to be our king of kings and lord of lords. When they went, they brought myrrh because they were wise enough to know that baby Jesus is going to be anointed for his burial even at birth. They brought frankincense, beloved friends, because they were wise enough to know that Jesus was going to be our high priest. So fast forward the day when Jesus was only 12 years old, his parents took him back to Bethlehem to look about his census papers. And Jesus disappeared on his mother and his father. They started getting nervous, wondering where their son was. And to hear, beloved friends, that Jesus was locked up in a room with lawyers and doctors. And one of the lawyers must have asked him, Jesus, how old are you? And he said, on my mother's side, I'm only 12 years old. But on my father's side, I'm older than time. On my mother's side, I watch the stars at night. But on my father's side, I have the sun, the moon, and the stars. On my mother's side, I play with rocks. But on my father's side, I am the rock of ages. Rock of ages, play for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And so Jesus grew up and he started to become a man. He did ministry for three and a half years. When he got ready to call his disciples, he called Peter, who was already working. He called James and John as they were mending their nets. He called Moses, who was uh, uh, looking after sheep. Yes, beloved friends, Amos was seated at the custom booth. David had a sling in his hands and was about to slay Goliath. Even Zacchaeus was climbing a tree. And so this was a special child. Jesus, beloved friends, when sick folks came around him, he healed the blind. The deaf started hearing. Yes, the leper got cleansing. Yes, beloved friends, Jesus was a special child. 100% God and 100% man. So the Pharisees, beloved friends, started plotting to kill Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus. But I heard somebody saying today, beloved friends, that Jesus says, I must rise up to the next level because stewardship is on my life. And I must go to that hill called Mount Calvary. So that Friday evening, beloved friends, they placed him on a cross. He stretched out everlasting arms. No one could sing because he lived, because he was about to die. Somebody told me that the world had a judgment hemorrhage and dipped in blood and died. The S-U-N could not shine while the S-O-N was dying. So the next day came, no one could sing all of 
resting in the grave. And so all that we can, beloved friends, there were feverish activities happening in heaven. And God the Father called Gabriel. I want you to go down to planet Earth and call my son. So Gabriel left the portals of glory. Didn't he wait for the pearly gates to be opened? But he scared the walls of Jasper, navigating through the clouds of heaven. That when Jesus landed on planet Earth, beloved friends, there was a mighty earthquake. And when he stepped on planet Earth, there was a whole lot of shaking going on. And he took out the divine keys from his side pocket, shook it in the face of the devil. Why we can rejoice this afternoon. Death is going to die. If you are faithful to Jesus, we are going to have the opportunity to go to Mr. Death's funeral. That is why we sing, because he lives. I can face tomorrow, because he lives. All fears are gone, because I know who holds the future. And life is worth while living just because he lives. Beloved friends, I am tired of Mr. Death. Death have been raining. Death have taken out some of the most important persons in the world. Beloved friends, but Romans tell us that the wages of sin is death. But I do declare God this evening, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. And so death might reign now, but there's a great day coming, beloved friends, when death will be swallowed up. Thursday, we heard the news 
that the operation was successful and she was doing well. And then the news came that she was gone. Lord have mercy. And so teach us, Lord, to know our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So I tell you, as I come to our conclusion, that there is going to be a meeting of morning. There is going to be a second coming. There is going to be all of these things. And First Thessalonians 4, 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Let me play with the text a little bit. Yes, the Bible says, for the Lord himself shall. Shall is not an ordinary word. Shall is not a subordinate word. Shall is an imperative word in the English language, which means that it, it must happen. Are you with me? So beloved friends, for the Lord himself shall descend with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we have this hope, beloved friends, that burns within our hearts. That is the reason when God alone teaches us to die on that cross. He made everything worth it, beloved friends.
Jesus. At this time, we have the eulogy by Kerry K. Richards, niece, followed by the prayer for the bereaved family, which will be done by Elder Earl MacDonald, one of the elders from the Manco Valley SDA Church. Medway White Cliff Williams, born on May 17, 1953, Teresa and Herbert Williams at the Brook Ryan Hospital. He was the first of eight children. The union produced four boys and four girls. Nettie started playing cricket at a very tender age of three. He would use the young red fruit as a ball at his grandmother's home. He loved cricket so much that any opportunity he got, he would take it. As the years progressed, he got better at playing the game. His education began at Miss Velta Gordon Basic School. After leaving Buskville Primary, he went to the Northern Academy in Ocherius, where he continued playing competitive cricket at school. He then went to play the Roach Cup, making centuries. He was selected for St. Mary Parish team. Soon after, he was drafted by the Jamaica Defense Force for the Senior Cup team, where he made centuries and double centuries. He lived with his brother for a while in Kingston. While he learned to play lawn tennis at the Farm Hotel, he was also he also trained, walked a lot, and at one point he took up boxing. A boxing match was held at the Moex um, beautiful Moex um, between himself and his opponent and his siblings at the ring, side screaming, lick him, Betty, lick him. <laughs> and of course, with all the training, he won the fight. Then he were at Maxon's Hotel and Restaurant, where he continued to play competitive cricket for the hotel. He went overseas, where he employed as a long term seasonal employee for the state of New York, office and parks, recreation, and historic preservation. He was signed to Hitler Hills State Park, located in Mount Hall. Medroy worked in the maintenance division, handling the daily upkeep of the park and its facilities. His duties include taking, his, his duties include tasks within work crew and independent assignments. The Human Resource Department recorded records indicated that he was an outstanding employee and uh, well with the co-workers, worked well with the co-workers as well as being liked and respected. He not only took the directions well, but he was also a self-starter and he goes above and beyond, as we know, of his duties. It was further stated above that Medroy had exemplary attendance record and was overall asset to the park. It was also stated that at the park, he worked at Granite Inn Resort Spa and Conference Center in Montauk. Cricket was his life. It was everything to him. While while doing very well, making centuries and centuries, he still did not make the Jamaica team. Mr. Monarch and the Monarch Hotel and Restaurant, along with the community members, started a petition on his behalf, and it went that Jamaica Cricket Board, he was later called for trials and played in two innings of the match between Jamaica and Trinidad. I guess nerves got the best of him, and he was pulled by Anthony Gray twice. Manroy was a proud young man. He never asked for anything. If he was okay, he would reply, yes, I'm always okay, but don't keep asking him or he'd get upset and walk away. He was very protective of his siblings, telling them they should always listen to him because he was always right and very good to say, me didn't tell y'all say, 
And then, nonetheless, Nettie always was encouraging words for his siblings. Nettie will be missed. May his soul rest in peace. He never died leaving five sisters, Brenda, Denise, Sheila, Janet, and Jessica. Four brothers, Teddy, Carla, Roy, and Christopher. Auntie Rose, Uncle Kenneth, nieces and nephews, relatives and friends. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, I, I'm here to pray, but I must say something about Miss Williams' family. You know, I met my dry about 2005. And when, uh, sometimes I don't want, I don't feel like we should talk, I, I hide it. I hide it because when we start talking, Late hours, we going, we going to continue because he wasn't a fool. He had good taste, but this Williams family, if if I didn't know the way to live, to love my um, my fellow men, my brethren, or to treat them, then I would have learned it from the Williams family. They, they is just a kind of people. They love their one another. They care about their one another. And they treat people with respect. I love them. I never heard a harsh word came from either one of them. I respect them to the marks as a family. And God bless you because you are living a life with God. Only one those of you who do not give your life to God as yet, who know that we are not our own. We are just stewards even for our own body. We are stewards for our body, to care for our body. We belong to God. Amen. If we didn't belong to him, then when death come, we could show, show it away and say, go away. And we could have carried anything with us then. But when we leave this world, we take nothing with us. So guess what? The greatest is to live a life that pleases God. Amen. That when the day comes, you will have a chance in that first resurrection. Thank you. Father, let us pray. Please let us very family stand. Let us uh, let those of you. Very, very family. Please remain seated. And those who Father God, today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth, I stand before your presence. Stand here today, I'm like absolutely nothing. I am unworthy, I am undone. All my righteousness before is like filthy rocks. I am a sinner by your grace. Forgive me, I beseech you for all my sins and cleanse me from all of my sins. Today I just want to ask you to intervene in ever, especially the bereaved family, the wisdom of life. Intervene in the special of those who do not accept you in their life yet. To let them know that there is a day there is a great day coming, yes. so they must make hay while the sun shines. Call upon him while he may be found. Now is the day. Today is the day if you hear my heart and not your heart. So please, I'm asking each and every one of you to look into yourself and see where it stands. If you have to grieve, grieve, because there is no there is no cure for grief, but to grieve. Yes. But don't grieve like you don't have any hope. Grieve. Because grief, you have to do. Today, especially, my dear sister Sheila Williams, please, help to comfort the rest of your family. You have to grieve as well, I know. But don't grieve as if there is no hope. 
help to comfort your family. Live a life before them that they can see Christ through you and your life. We led them to glorify Jesus Christ. I'm asking you at this time that you will have your own way. I thank you that from morning until now you let this funeral service operate as if there is even better than a funeral service. I thank you for the in every way that you let everyone behave with principle and with authority. I praise and thank you. I praise and thank you for our dear pastor who put out it like he, he, the Holy Spirit speak through him and he used what he is supposed to do. I thank you for this, uh, our Rock of Best Church who, who entertained this funeral service. Thank you for everyone here. And as we are about to go to the place of burial, please be the master driver, the master pilot of every vehicle who's taking us there. Have your own way and let everything done in order, just like it's done here, with your with your help and with your strength. Let your will be done. Take over now, I pray. Take full control and have your own sweet way, as I say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. First of all, I'd like to thank you on behalf of our leaders, board of the Rappabes Assembly of the Church. We thank you so much for having behaved so well, having been so kind as we spend this Thanksgiving service together. By way of instructions, so we will have the benediction and then we are going to be standing and singing our recessional hymn. And during the singing of the recessional hymn, the platform party will lead the charge, then the casket, and there are the family and friends and well-wishers. Let us continue to support the Williams family right to the Port Maria Cemetery. And let us continue to pray for them. So at this time, I invite you to stand for the benediction. Bow your heads with me. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, remain, and abide with us now forever and ever. And help that as we journey, cover us to the cemetery in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite the Paul Bearers also to stand by the casket. When, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be the more.
I invite you at this time to bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you have guided us to this final place of interment. Pray that you will be with this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For as much as God in his infinite wisdom has caused Ledroy Wycliffe Williams to fall asleep, we realize that the Lord, when he created man, he was gracious unto man. And he gave man a charge, be fruitful and multiply. But then sin came into the world, or the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Therefore, as God allowed Ned Roy Wycliffe Williams to fall asleep, we do lovingly commit his body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, remembering that we serve a God who is not willing that none of us perish, but that all have eternal life. And so at this time, we will sing some hymns and choruses as the workmen proceed to do their work. The first hymn that we shall sing is Shall We Gather at the River? Shall we gather at the river where bright and the feet of God?